how many of your tenants are not coming back? You know, it's obviously it's hard to say right now who is going to be back in business in a few weeks or a month and who isn't. Everyone at this point is at home, and so I think we're all in a wait-and-see position on that. But I would say that when this uh, pandemic begins to settle down and various jurisdictions, states, uh, uh, countries, and so forth begin the back-to-work protocols that I, I suspect that most every business will be in one form or another, making that slow transition from home offices and remote working back into the uh, back into the market. Brett, there are some companies out there that say, say they're going to operate with a lot smaller of a real estate footprint after this is all over. Morgan Stanley CEO James Gorman had told us that, for example. Are you preparing for the reality also that a lot of clients might just operate with less real estate, and what could that look like? You know, it's a, it's a great question. I think it's easier said than done. And I've seen Jim's comments, and I, I know exactly uh, how Jim is looking at the world right now, which is the same way we all are. We've had this experience of watching our employees work remotely for the last six weeks. And frankly, the productivity uh, levels of folks working at home have been equal to the productivity levels at the office. Now, that having been said, uh, there is not a large percentage of the workforce in most companies that can work permanently from home. So my own view is it's unlikely we're going to see a lot less space consumed by companies, but it's highly likely that we're going to see companies be a lot more flexible on how people use office space when they're in the office, when they're not in the office. But I do think something has changed in the last few weeks. The first two weeks of this pandemic, there was a lot of talk around gosh, it's easy for our folks to work at home, so let's just not come back. I think people, as they've actually considered how that works, have changed their view on that. So it's more now around flexible uh, workspace. It's around flexibility of where people uh, work on day-to-day, -day, hot desking and so forth. But my guess is you're not going to see much of a decrease in the use of, uh, of office space going forward. But, Brett, how do you convince Wall Street? Carl Icahn is shorting commercial real estate. Mortgage REITs got killed at the beginning of this. What do you say to Wall Street to prove that, you know, you can get your tenants back paying 100 percent? Well, first of all, commercial real estate is a very, very large asset class. And so there's a different story for each asset class. And, you know, for example, residential mortgage REITs are in a completely different universe of pain right now than are, say, industrial logistics owners like Prologis who are really enjoying uh, incredibly strong demand to their facilities because of fulfillment centers and e-commerce and so forth. So I think you're, you're going to have a different story across each different type of asset class. Office space, generally, I think we're going to see, well, I know we'll see all companies in office space come back to work. Now, whether they bring everybody back or 90% of their people back, we don't know. And certainly all, all major companies, ourselves included, are looking at the market and saying, gee, we've had a number of people work from home. They're very productive. Who could we leave at home? It would be better for them, less commute time, less, less uh, inefficiency in their day. And when you look across your, your employee stack, there are some people that absolutely can work at home. It's not the majority of your people, though. And the way the market looks, when, when you think about how the market looks at uh, this industry and digests this information, I think you're seeing the pain where it belongs. Retail is in triage, no doubt about it. And what happens to retail over the next year to two years is a big unknown, but it certainly is not going to be good news. As I mentioned, on the other side of that spectrum, you've got industrial real mm -hmm. estate, which is enjoying some of the best days they've ever had. Well, so net-net, uh, Brett, how is this impacting your business? Are you going to have to revise your earnings expectations for the end of the year? Well, I think it's fair to say that 99% of the companies out there that provided guidance for 2020 have taken that guidance away or will take that guidance away and will be no different uh, than that. I think that the way in which we're all looking at this year, 2020, um, has changed demonstrably over the last six weeks. For our business, we've been through, and this industry has been through, many, many downturns. And the good news is here at Cushman & Wakefield is, our senior leadership team uh, led companies through the GFC. Uh, I've been through four of these uh, Black Swan events. 
And we have a playbook for that, and that playbook is you really watch uh, expenses carefully. You know that transaction activity, brokerage deals are going to slow down until there's price discovery. And you, uh, you, you modulate your expense against that lower revenue and then look for uh, what recovery might look like. And I think for right. us and for most firms in this industry, we're really looking at 2021 and thinking about what might recovery look like, how might that come back into the marketplace. But no doubt about right. it, uh, the early quarters of 2020, that's when the second and third quarter are going to be interesting ones for all of us. Brett, you mentioned expenses are something that you're going to be keeping an eye on here. Does that mean you're going to be making headcount reductions anytime in the next year or so? So we uh, announced an efficiency program at Cushman and Wakefield actually last November, which obviously pan the pandemic wasn't here. It was not based on the pandemic. It was based on our view that there's a better model, frankly, for commercial real estate services than this industry has used for many years. And we implemented that program uh, November and December. Uh, that did involve uh, some employee reductions, uh, but we really came into uh, this Black Swan event with those done and in place. And I think it gave us an enormous advantage. We don't really need to right now think about um, further large employee reductions because of the fact that we had this program in place and really executed by the first of the year.